Hey people, let's talk about the military tactics for this Future Start mod for Civ 3 multiplayer. So here's a game I played. Uh, it's a 3v3 uh, game of Future Start multiplayer, and I am Egypt, and I've got like a cute little start here. Uh, I moved to the coast, so I'll have a coastal capital. That's very important in future if you're able to do so. Uh, my first move was to chop an explorer and then to switch it in my government into republic. So that's just a standard opening, and now I'm going to go for a granary. But this game will become turned on its head when I get some crucial piece of information. And that piece of information is that my arrival, arch rival you might even say, his name is Halu, spawned very, very close to me. So I'll check out the next save file and see what's up. Great, so here I am, I'm ready to chop my granary. And I notice Halu's down here. He, I saw his scout somewhere around here and I look at where he is, and he has spawned quite close to me. Now, I noticed from his score that he walked three turns at the start, uh, but still, we are very close, and we're going to be in open warfare. So I need to figure out some early game military tactics for how I'm going to do things with Halu. So right now, I've got two options. You might notice that I actually haven't popped my settler yet. Normally, in future, it's standard, if you have enough huts, that you will get at least one settler or city from a hut, and you're going to use that city to... like. Uh, further your advancement and that kind of thing. Uh, if you have an above average or an above average number of cities, then you can't pop. So normally, only people only get one per game, uh, and I don't have mine yet. So I got two options right now. I can choose to scout Halu and see what's up with him, or I can go off here. Now I think if he has huts to the south of them, he will have already popped them. But these huts right here, he might not have popped. So I had to choose between: do I go for the huts or do I go to scout? And because I know we're so close, and this is such a volatile matchup, and a volatile mod in general, I decide to go scout him instead. Instead, So, I'll look around, and in the next save file, you'll see, I actually see that he has oil south of him. So this is pretty interesting, right? I have aluminum not too far, and he has oil uh, a little bit further uh, but generally, people like say, oh, in future, oil is so overpowered. Oil is the only thing you need. If you have oil, you don't need anything else. Nothing can beat oil. Well, it's not quite that simple. Aluminum is actually quite good, too. And if you play your cards right with aluminum, you can win 1v1 against oil. Yeah, here is his oil, as you can see. It's a little further away from him. He has to go over some rough terrain to get there. And also, crucially, if I rode towards my aluminum, I'm also roading towards Halu. So that lets me make a military play uh, without... Uh, while I hook my resources, I can like road to Halu and have faster mobility to him and also hook my resources. So I scout around here. I'm, I'm going up here to try to hook, pop my huts. I was praying that they were still there because I saw Halu's scout go north this way. So maybe he didn't go up this peninsula and Halu actually did get a free city from a hut. So that's a disadvantage I have. So, uh, when you're formulating a game plan, it's important to like, look at like what advantages do I have and what disadvantages do I have? And I made a chart for you guys. So, my advantages were I'm Egypt, a very good Civ in future, guaranteed two-turn anarchy. Uh, Halo actually had a three-turn anarchy, uh, so that's good luck for him. Uh, but mine was faster, so I had one more turn out of anarchy. I had faster worker speed, because I'm industrial, uh, industrious. In When you're in Republic, uh, in the Future Start mod, you, and you're an industrious Civ, you actually can chop forests in one turn. So that's great, it helps speed up my expansion phase. I planted two turns earlier than him. I planted turn two. Halu planted turn three, uh, so that means I get the extra two. I mean, we were both in Anarchy during that time, uh, but in Anarchy, you can still grow, so I, I got an extra four or something food uh, from that. Uh, I have extra gold from huts and rivers, because I did get some huts. I just didn't get any settlers from the huts. Uh, I, I used some gold to rush my, my granary a bit, and... Oh, uh, and I have a river, which Halu doesn't. We'd have, like, roughly equivalent land otherwise. Like, he's got uh, the horses. I got more BGs and more forest. Uh, he has the gold, too. But, yeah, like, roughly equal land. But I do have the river, so that gives me a small advantage in gold, along with the uh, the huts. And I got aluminum near. Halu's advantages, of course, he has the oil. Uh, he popped a settler, so he just straight up has the city over me. Uh, he has his scout. He's an expansion of Civ, so he starts with a scout. And he can maybe build Cossacks. Uh, there's some saltpeter under here that I later discovered. 
uh, and he has horses, so he could build Russia's unique unit sometime in the future. Now, the crucial decision that Halu made, uh, we're going to talk about build order in a bit, but first let's talk about uh, how the matchup of oil versus aluminum goes. So oil gives you access to very powerful boats. Uh, I mean, aside from Aegis Cruiser or nuclear submarines, there's nothing else even comparable uh, that you can get without oil. And I don't have the ingredients, for, I don't have uranium, which you need for those two boats. So Halu can completely dominate me at sea, but this isn't really relevant here, since to send units to me, he'd have to go all the way up around this peninsula. So the boat factor is not really an issue. Um, of course, with oil, you get planes, the basic planes. By that, I mean bombers and fighters. They're not really basic. Oh, you get helicopters too. Uh, they're basic in the sense that they're like the first level of planes, but bombers are a very, very powerful unit. Don't get me wrong. And with rubber, you can build mech infantry and modern paratroopers, which are buffed to have an extra movement point in future. So aluminum, you get cruise missiles. Uh, so due to a bug in future, cruise missiles are very, very powerful. Uh, and they get more powerful the more players are in the game. So with a, a five or six player game, they're moderately powerful. Like I'd say a single two cruise missile can kill like two drafted Taos pretty easily if they're on top of each other. Uh, you also get radar artillery potentially. Uh, special forces with rubber, that's a, a new unit for the future mod. It's basically like a marine with an extra movement point. It's a foot unit, so it can go in helicopters. Uh, and it can go over rough terrain without any movement penalty. So uh, a great kind of unit that you can get, maybe. And the Aegis Cruiser, too. So basically, what it's going to come down to is boats are off the table. Halo doesn't have rubber. Planes against uh, cruise missiles, radars, or special forces are my options. But uh, I think cruise missiles should work fine. So what kind of build order do I go for here? Well, I realize that in the long run, I think oil is slightly better than aluminum, but I do have a lot of early advantages here that accelerate my expansion phase, like the quicker anarchy, the quicker workers, planted sooner, extra gold. And Halo's advantages, like the, the settler and stuff, are more long-term. Uh, so I think I can make a play here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to road towards Halu. So if you check out the build order that I did, you'll notice that Everything I did was in advancement of this goal of doing a rush against Halu. The only one thing I did that was like a bit um, greedy, not greedy, and it wasn't at all greedy. It's very moderate, actually. But the only thing I did to help my own development rather than help my invasion was I built uh, more than one extra worker. Because you need two workers. You start with one worker. Two workers can road down to Halu pretty easily. Like they go one after the other. Because uh, you can road in one turn, so you just do like kind of a, a chain. And then the third wor worker is like technically superfluous. Uh, but I, I like I binged on that for my own development, and that was the one thing I did. After I got the worker out, I went straight into wartime mode. So standard build, explore, granary. That's what you want to do 90% of the games, 95% of the games. I got one extra worker, and then I got another extra worker out. So normally one extra worker is pretty good, two is often good, even three sometimes, if you know what you're doing. And then I switched into wartime mode and I got an artillery out. So after the artillery came out, I drafted once and then I got my settler and then I went straight for cruise missiles in both my cities. So uh, we're gonna go a little bit further and see how that plays out. But Halu made a crucial mistake here and the crucial mistake actually didn't completely have to do with his build. Because given the information he had, his build made a lot of sense. But he was missing crucial information because he didn't properly scout me. So he skipped the explorer so that he'd get the granary faster. Because he only had one force to chop. So the granary would have came to slow. He also knew that he planted turn three, so he was a little bit behind. And he's the Russians. So he starts with the scout. And you actually can't pop barbarians as an expansion of Civ. So he can pop uh, huts with his king too. So he figured, okay, I got the scout, I got the king. I don't really need the explorer in this case because it looks like a smaller island, but because of that, he missed some crucial information. So what you'll see is the aluminum is here. Kalu went with his scout. He went up this direction and he scouted my backyard, but he never actually scouted the aluminum. So because of that, he didn't think he was in much danger. So the build order he went through is more like a standard, like not even greedy, but just like, yeah, he got a granary up in his pop city. Uh, he got some extra workers out, of course. He got two happiness buildings in his capital. Eventually, he got a bit of barracks. 
like lots of stuff. I didn't get out the extra granary. I didn't get out the barracks. I didn't get out. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get out any happiness buildings, even though I'm religious and I have cheap happiness buildings. I just went straight for the attack. So we'll see how that plays out. I think this turn is the one I switched to. It skips a turn for, forward. I actually, like when you reload uh, a hot seat save, it like gives you an extra turn's worth of shield and food. I didn't like fuck up my food like this and fuck up my production. The, the timing on the artillery was better, basically. Uh, and so what I do after that is I just start roading towards Halu. One worker after the other. One foot in front of the other. So this is a common strategy if you actually don't have resources. You draft some Taos and you send a, a very quick artillery at someone backed up by a road. And that like creates a point of pressure on the map. And behind that, you can either like double down with your own attack. Maybe someone gives you resources or maybe anything else. Or you can also, um, maybe you could boat their back line. Or you can also expand behind that. Like the enemy has to like protect against this attack because they have to deal with the artillery. And meanwhile, you can just be building like marketplaces, happiness buildings, extra cities and stuff like that. And then they'll, they'll be far behind on development. So the artillery is like actually a standard kind of attack if you spawn this close to your enemy. So Halu didn't actually know something was up when I was doing this. Uh, like I start roading toward, like I do this. Uh, I plant the settler on top of the aluminum so I don't have to waste the, the worker turns to road the aluminum. And I back this up with my, my Tau. So as soon as Halu actually sees the artillery, he doesn't necessarily know that something is wrong. He just thinks I'm doing a standard artillery rush, and in the long run, he's going to have oil, so there's no hurry. So he defends properly against the artillery rush, but he doesn't... He continue, like he builds an additional happiness building in his capital. He uh, doesn't really react properly because he doesn't have the information that I have aluminum. Because artilleries don't have lethal bombard. They can't actually really take cities. Oh, someone on the other team died to a quick rush. I didn't get disorder in the actual game. Yeah, and as you see, like I continue advancing with the workers. And at end of turn, I move the worker here. Then I move... Oh, I think what I did was... Yeah, at the end of the last turn, I'd actually hit this tile, which had a road, with my artillery. So at end of turn, I just... Uh, I do this, and then I advance like this. Yeah. And this was actually kind of an awkward situation, because I wasn't actually prepared to take that worker, because then I'd be leaving my, workers, my own workers and my artillery unescorted, and he could actually kill my Tau... And I only had the one Tau because I went for the Settler and, and I wasn't able to draft for a bit. So I, I like actually didn't, I passed up the opportunity to take his worker because I was scared for my own Tau. But yeah, so right now I've got the artillery very close to him. So I can like crater his tiles and craters like reduce the commerce, reduce the shields, reduce the, the food, and they destroy the improvements, obviously. So he has to protect his tiles. So what he can do against that is, I think we have a slide for that. Yes. So you station Taos and maybe Kings on tiles to protect against being cratered. Uh, so Kings, because like I said, the artillery doesn't have lethal bombard. So if I like bomb this tile and his King is on it, his King is on that tile, his King might take damage, but his King won't die. So if it's just against artillery, then that's safe. If you know for a fact that your opponent doesn't have cruise missiles or bombers, because if they do have cruise missiles or bombers or even like a battleship or something like that, they can just, if they see your King, they can just bomb it and your King dies, you die because this is regicide. So, uh, you should also draft heavily, uh, especially since like if you if you get cratered a bit, it might be hard to draft in the future. Uh, build more happiness buildings if you need happiness to support the draft. Uh, expand away from the zone your enemy controls. So if I have my artillery here, I can bomb anywhere in a three tile radius because uh, there's plus one range in art artillery in future start uh, in this mod. So he'd want to expand like towards here, maybe on the lake, get the oil, that kind of thing. Don't start expanding towards me, because then I can bomb these tiles. And try to build his own artillery, maybe cut my road so I couldn't reinforce the attack. Uh, hook resources, basically stay calm, don't overreact, and scout the enemy. Are they doubling down on the attack, or are they going to follow this up with something? Or are they expanding behind the attack? You need to know, and like I said, you don't want to play 
too cautiously if they are expanding behind the attack. But if they're doubling down, then yes, definitely get your defenses up. So Halo reacted appropriately for an artillery rush because he thought it was just an artillery rush. Like he got units on all, on all his tiles. Uh, I think we'll see this in the next save file. Yeah, uh, so he's going to have units, like if we try here, it's just going to say enemy unit injured. So because I uh, bombarded the unit, I actually didn't bombard the tile, and so the tile is protected. It doesn't get cratered. So what I did was I actually just walked at end of turn. I walked a Tau infantry in there. Now, normally this would be leaving my artillery exposed, uh, but because of defensive the defensive bombard bug in multiplayer, which makes defensive bombard very strong, uh, this is actually fairly safe right here. Like, if he attacks with his Tau, then his Tau will die. He'd have to attack with two to get a decent shot of beating me. So yeah, I advance in here, and I back this up with my cruise missile. So the mistake I made was only using one cruise missile. Like, in a five-player game, they get stronger the more players there are in the game. In a five-player game, they're not that strong. Uh, so I actually left his Tau infantry with, like, one health left, and then I tried to attack, and I failed. So that was a mistake on my part. Uh, but I told myself I wasn't going to make that mistake again. So I got the cruise missile out here, and then I followed up with another one in Memphis. So yeah, we'll see this from his perspective. Oh, he's actually, huh, he actually didn't protect these tiles. Yeah, so he moved his Tau in. Uh, I cruised him, I got rid of one Tau, but the other Tau had one health left. Uh, and yeah, you'll see like he has these extra buildings in Memf or in his capital that I don't have. And in the long term, that would have really paid off. But this is a do or die scenario because he couldn't. Yeah, he only just recently saw the that the city was on the uh, the aluminum. He didn't scout this part of the map. So yeah, he survives another turn. You notice St. Petersburg has a granary and like, what are you going to do with a granary? Because there's not really many safe tiles to send your workers uh, there aren't many safe places to expand. You'd be much better if you built, like, artillery or something in St. Petersburg. So, yeah, we'll just have a look on the, at the, the last save file. So the last save file was just a repeat of the, the same attack I did before, except I used two cruise missiles instead of one. So yeah, I move this into position, I move this into position. I didn't do the attack until next turn, but at the end of this turn, what I did was I moved this guy. I think I took out the walls with my artillery. Yeah. <laughs> I moved this guy here at end of turn. And at the start of next turn, I cruised St. Petersburg once. It had a one health guy left in it. I cruised it a second time, and I walked into the empty city. From there, he attacked my Tau, uh, but my Tau won combat, and I was actually able to reinforce before he could attack with a second Tau. And now, of course, that would leave my artillery exposed, reinforcing St. Petersburg once I took it, but I could just move this Tau over since it's next turn. So yeah, because of that, I took St. Petersburg. From there, I can just have like free reign to cruise missile Moscow and then take Moscow when it's empty. So from that position, he's kind of fucked. And so because they'd already lost a player elsewhere on the map their team conceded. So that was a, a pretty quick win from us. And so you can see how, I mean, he didn't even get the chance to hook his oil. Like I killed him with aluminum before he hooked his oil. Uh, but even if he like, he lo he'd lost St. Petersburg, he was trying to hold out in Moscow. Even if he hooked the oil and he started getting planes out, it would be too late. The aluminum, like the cruise muscles and stuff would just crush him. So oil is not the solution to all your problems, especially if you get there, like get the jump on the player who will soon hook the oil. So one person, like I, I told people in the Discord that I was going to make this video and I asked if they had any things that uh, they wanted me to cover. And one of them said, how do you recover when you make a mistake? So in this case, Halo made a mistake. He didn't scout me. He didn't see that I had aluminum and he didn't recognize the threat of cruise missiles coming out of him. So what do you do? Like, let's say he was in that position where he saw that I cruised a city and I didn't take the city, luckily. Like, how do you recover that from that from his perspective? So the one thing you do is, I mean, you keep drafting. You realize that, okay, Suede is actually doubling down here. I need to keep ratcheting up the pressure or the defenses. Otherwise, I'm going to get overwhelmed here. 
So you want to spread your units out. So the way you counter cruises is, I mean, cruises are good at taking out small stacks, uh, big stacks if you have a lot of cruises. Uh, but if you spread your units out, it's not really worth like it's not really worth cruising the single tau infantry. Like trading a drafted tau for a cruise missile is totally not worth it. So if you spread your like if he has one tau on each tile, that's a good defensive position against uh, cruise missiles. Keep your king outside of your city because it's a common tactic to just cruise the city because often cities have units in it, and if there's no units, then you uh, your cruise missiles will actually destroy buildings. So for that reason. Because cities are such an obvious target, whether there's a king in there or not, you want to keep your city or your king outside the city if you're fighting cruise missiles. Uh, notice why bombers and cruise missiles are such a de deadly combo based on what I said. Because against uh, against bombers, you actually want to keep your king inside the city because if you keep it on the terrain, then they can recon your king and then they can just bomb it down. Uh, and also against bombers, if you have one unit on each tile, they're just going to get bombed down. You want to like stack your units together kind of against bombers a lot of the time. So for that reason, bombers plus cruises, a very deadly combo. But here I only had cruises. So what does he do? So you have to be quick on the draw because you can get cruised at any time. And if like you're cruised over a tile that you need to hold, you instantly want to be able to reinforce that tile before the person who cruised the tile can get onto it. So for example, right here, if I cruise St. Petersburg, then Hallow has to react very quickly and get another unit into St. Petersburg, so I can't take the city when it's empty. Uh, you can try to nab the cruise missiles. That's easier if you have resources on, of your own. Like if you, for example, built a veteran Cossack, uh, like a veteran Cossack would have like a decent odd of like taking even a protected cruise. But if you can like do a sneaky move and try to take an unprotected cruise, uh, you actually capture the cruise missile and you can use it against your enemy. Uh, you can also do something with like helicopters. You like recon to see where their unescorted cruise missiles are, and then you try to grab the the cruise missile using a helicopter uh, by airdropping a unit right next to the cruise missile. So uh, build flax. So flax are like one of the most cost efficient ways of just getting bodies in a city. Uh, they're very good at soaking up cruise hits, hits especially veteran flax. Uh, and if you want to build them quickly, you use wartime mode. Halo didn't really go wartime mode until later. And the last thing you do is you you hook resources. I mean, this is something you want to do in all cases, but it is very hard to uh, win extended trades, uh, especially like by a player who knows what they're doing, if they have resources over an extended period of time against you. You can hold off for 20, 10, 20 turns, uh, but you should hook your resources or you should get your allies to give you resources, and that will help you come back. So yeah, that's the counter. If Halo was in this position, that's what he should have done. Get some more uh, flax into St. Petersburg to soak up the cruise hits. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. We were talking about this earlier, how there's two strategies for dealing with cruise missiles. You either put one unit on each tile, and then it's not cost-effective to cruise missile something, or you put a ton of units on a tile, and that way the cruises won't actually kill the units, and your units can just heal up again. You just don't want to be in the middle where you have like a couple units, but not too many. If you have two or three units, that's a viable target for cruise missling. Uh, and that's not what you want to do against cruise missiles. So yeah, if you just like stacked a bunch of veteran Taos and veteran Flax in St. Petersburg, I wouldn't be able to overcome him. I might like send some raider artillery and continue to harass him, but the attack would be effectively like stalled out and I wouldn't be able to make any more progress. Anyway, yeah, uh, that's the tactics for future start just in this scenario, but I hope it gives you like a bit of illumination of like how we play this out and what the thinking process is. Like the importance of information and like knowing the matchup between the different resources and also the advantages you have going to the game. Like just knowing that I had like the jump on Hallow because I had like a faster plant and because of my sieve gave me the, the courage to do this attack and it was successful. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.